Hi everyone, this is Kaptan Baha. Today we're going to talk about landing gears. Specifically, what do we do when things go wrong? What do we do when we don't have the landing gear coming down properly? Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. This is your Kaptan Baha. I am going to be giving you a false information about the things that I'm going to be talking about. Write a comment below and tell me, hey, Kaptan Baha, you were absolutely wrong about that thing. And then we'll discuss what was wrong and see who's going to find it first. All right, let's start. When we first start our flight training, we start with an airplane, most likely, that is a fixed gear aircraft. Cessna 152, Cessna 172, or a Piper Warrior, Piper Tomahawk, or some light sport aircraft, or something else. You start with an airplane that has landing gear that it's bolted under the wings. This makes things simpler from cost perspective for flight schools, and also it makes things simpler for flying perspective, because if you ever taken a flight lesson, it's a lot of stuff happening very fast. So for that purpose, we start our flight training and as we become more and more proficient, the airplanes become bigger and more complex. FAA de defines an airplane, a complex airplane that is, as an airplane that has a controllable pitch prop, it has flaps, and it also an airplane that has landing gear that comes up. Retractable landing gear, basically, that's the technical term that they use. I'm sure the EASA or other agencies require the same. So when you go through your commercial training, you get your exposure to the complex airplane and you get your exposure to the airplane that has a retractable landing gear for the very first time. I remember going through my very first training uh, when I was actually introduced to a complex airplane. It was a Cessna 172 RG and that airplane was a lot of airplane for me coming from a Cessna 152 because it required you to adjust the power right after takeoff. It required you to think about the gear. And my instructors, they have always told me, what are you going to do if the gear doesn't come down? How are you going to handle it? Because you have to get exposed to that kind of a training in order to prove to the examiner that you are a commercial pilot. As I progressed through my training, I got my commercial license in a Cessna 172 that has actually a very interesting landing gear system compared to the other ones. All right, remember I was telling you about the Cessna 172 gear, how it works and everything? Well, this is the schematics of that system. So here's uh, the landing gear lever. You just bring it up and down, uh, and then that actuates the different hydraulic systems. I won't get into the details of it, but uh, in order to bring the landing gear down, what you do if this thing doesn't work, there's something with the, wrong with the gear motor. Here's the pump that you use to pump the hydraulics so that you can actually extend the main landing gear. Unlike the Piper line of aircraft, Cessna 172 RG doesn't have a free fall system. So, and because of the fact that this gear comes down just like this normally in this direction, that requires an, an, a resistance uh, against the wind that it's flying. So in order to bring the gear down, nose gear down, in the case of a Cessna 172 RG, you have to slow the airplane down almost to a slow flight speed so that you can reduce the resistance on the uh, nose wheel uh, uh, when you're flying the airplane because of the fact that it's swinging down just like this. In the Piper line of aircraft, this gear sits pretty much the same direction, but it's stowed in that direction, just like that. And when you release it and the doors are open, well, what happens in that case, the wind hits the gear and brings it back and locks it into the position. As you can see, that system is a lot more desirable and most of the time, the airplane systems um, the, in the transport category airplanes work the same way. I say most of the time, yes, they take advantage of the 
the gravity, but at the same time, the gears are so huge, the loading is, are, uh, is so huge that you also need some extra assistance, and that's actually provided by electrical motors. So let's go and review the uh, Piper line, for instance, really quickly, and then we'll go to the, uh, the QRH for um, 767. Then I've flown a Piper Aero. I got checked out in it. It was a beautiful airplane. I rented it to build some flight time. And then I went into a Piper Seminole to get my multi-engine rating. Okay, here we are looking at the uh, Piper Seminole's uh, landing gear configuration. So in this case, you have a landing gear selector switch. You actually, what you do in order for you to not to bump it off the location, you actually pull it out and then you pull it down. And when you're putting it up, it's, it's the same procedure. Um, you have left gear, right gear, and nose gear light bulbs. A uh, little trick from, for you um, <laughs> from the flight school days. If you can change, if you had interchangeable light bulbs with the designated, you know, um, location of them, like left gear here, I used to go and just to mess with the students, I used to change the left gear to the uh, right gear and the right gear to the left gear, or put the nose gear here and say, hey, look, this is the left one, this is right one, and this is the nose gear type of stuff. You can actually differentiate between a student that it's. Uh, has studied and done his or her homework versus somebody who's just coming along for a ride very easily by fooling them like that. But that's besides the point. What you see here is actually a guarded switch. It's an emergency gear extension switch. And emergency gear extension switch is just basically releases all the um, uh, uplocks from the, the, the landing gear system and then enables the gear to come down. As I said, on the Piper system, everything is done hydraulically, and you have an uh, electrical motor that just basically pushes the gear down and takes care of the issue like that in case of an emergency. Both Pipers had an emergency landing gear extension that worked thanks to the gravity. So if you actually release the landing gear pressure off of the Pipers, the airplane's gear would come down the nose wheel, if you think about this way as the airplane is going, would come down like this and then it would hit the wind and it would just basically come down straight like that. Simple system. 172RG was a different system. So like it's the case like in this one, like Cessna system versus Piper system, commercial aircraft, they have different systems where you actually have to put the uh, landing gear down in, ca in case of an emergency. However, the whole mentality, whole um, the way that you do it is completely different. What do you do in a single engine or multi-engine airplane? You just follow a very short checklist and then you, you are done with it. However, in this case, like we're going to take the case of a FedEx 1026, they had an indication of a gear unsafe indication. So FedEx uh, 1026, baby. we're discontinuing the approach for an unsafe gear indication. We're going to level it off right here at 1,000 for now. FedEx 1026 Heavy, Roger. Uh, when you're able to climb and maintain 2,000 and fly runway heading. Runway heading 2,000, FedEx 1026 Heavy. So we will talk about what that means, and we will talk about how you get that indication on what you do. When you're flying a commercial aircraft, you actually don't act like you're flying a general aviation aircraft. There is a very thick book, like in our case on a 7.4 is this book called QRH, uh, Quick Reference Handbook. It's a handbook that tells you what to do when you get a problem in the cockpit. Well, if an airplane is in a status that it's not desired, the airplane will talk to you. We have screens in the airplane that will just basically tell you, hey, look, my landing gear is not down fully and it's down, but it's not locked. Or in some cases, we, in the older airplanes, we have enunciators. They are basically a light that goes on and, or in case of a certain problem. And just basically only that light comes on. And then in that case, you just basically are being told by the airplane, hey, take care of this problem before we land or we take off or we 
cruise, depending on the problem. In this case, it's just basically the airplane telling you, hey, take care of this problem before we land. So in the case of a FedEx 1026, they had, they were coming in on a normal approach, everything was fine and dandy, and then all out of the blue, when they put the gear down, well, they got a warning about it. So what do you do in that case? Do you just land? Absolutely not. So they went around and they went into a hold. Obviously, they had enough fuel to be able to do that. Departure FedEx uh, 1026 heads to the 2000 runway heading, uh, and we're going to go through a checklist for an unsafe gear indication. FedEx 1026 heavy still departure to contact Clementine 5000. A 5000 FedEx 1026 heavy. Uh, 1026, I mean, did you want to say you want to go near a certain point to uh, test this out? Uh, no, um, we can probably just do uh, whatever kind of a, a racetrack pattern uh, back around toward the uh, approach in the runway that works for you. That'll work for us as well. Okay, yeah, um, you can just, just fly that heading for now. I'll turn you back around here uh, shortly. Just let me know when, you, when you're ready to go. They most likely pulled out the QRH and see if they could engage the emergency gear extension procedure and follow that procedure looking at the QRH. But it is also a good example of how this kind of an emergency turns into a very good teamwork by a lot of the parties that are involved. Approach uh, from FedEx 1026, Go ahead, sir. Yeah, we've gone through our checklist and... Um our left main gear is still indicating uh, uh, unsafe. Um, and uh, we were wondering if there's any way that we could fly over the airport and uh, get a visual inspection by uh, someone in the tower. Sure, uh, let me set that up. Uh, FedEx 1026 heavy flighting 090. Let me do some coordination. I'll get right back to you. Roger, 090 heading FedEx 1026 heavy. FedEx 1026 heavy, uh, yeah, they said they, they can do that for you. Uh, fly heading of uh, 070, we'll get you back on the final and uh, they'll look at it. Okay, 070 heading, and uh, ask them what altitude would be uh, the most optimum for them to uh, get a good look at the uh, bottom side of our airplane. Yeah, he told me 1,000 feet. Okay, thanks. 1026 heavy, so Cal approach, Roger. I just talked to the tower. Uh... If it's good with you, move you over to 2-4 left, they'll put you a little closer to them, and they said that you can go below 1,000 if you want, so you can go down to 500, whatever works best for you and, uh, you know, your crew. A lot of the people and a lot of the public think that, you know, the captain, like Sully, he takes care of all the problems, and yes, he did, but at the same time, in the case of a normal emergency where you have a time in your hands and when you have the opportunity to rectify the problem, you bring in a lot of people into the problem-solving process. In, the in this case, they had air traffic control, ATC, that was helping them out. The ATC was coordinating with the ground crew and the people that they are driving those trucks around the airport saying, hey, you know, we have a problem with an airplane. They're going to come down and they're going to most likely do a low pass See if you can just get a car on the runway and then basically drive really fast while that airplane is flying and check the status of the, of the landing gear. This was the, actually the second solution that they did. FedEx 1026 heavy contact LA Tower 120.9 or 5. They'll work with you for the low approach. 120.9 or 5, FedEx 1026 heavy. Tower FedEx 1026 heavy is with you coming in on the ILS 24 left. FedEx 1026 Heavy, Alex Tower, one calm runway, 24 left, cleared low approach. What altitude do you think you'll drop to? We're going to try to come down to 500 feet. FedEx 1026 Heavy, Roger, that's approved. And uh, after you do the low pass, then you can climb to 2,000. 2,000 uh, after the low approach, FedEx 1026 Heavy. FedEx 1026 Heavy, anything specific you want us to look for? Are you showing that the gear's not down or... What we'd like you to look for is the left main landing gear. The left main landing gear is indicating uh, unsafe, and uh, the other two gear are indicating down and locked. So concentrate on looking at the left main landing gear. Understood. Thanks. FedEx 1026 Heavy, Roger. I maintain 2,000, fly the runway heading. And to be honest, it's extremely hard to tell from the tower. I, I had, we had two sets of binos on it, and it's just really hard to differentiate. Uh, that left gear from the right gear. 
uh, if the the bay door was open. Okay. Well, uh, that's we're only doing uh, the best we can to see if we could get an idea of uh, if you guys could give us any more information. Base 1026 Heavy. Yeah, like I said, we both had uh, vinyls on it, and I I can't. I can't give you that solid determination that it was down. Uh, both of us had trouble seeing it. Okay, um, but uh, could both of you or either one of you say with any degree of certainty that uh, it was it was definitely up, or did it look like something was down? That is 1026 heavy. It didn't look like it was up. It appeared to be down. If you want to give it one more pass, we can try to get someone on the ground to grab some binos as well. But uh, th that's about it, all we can say. It, it yeah, we can. Uh, yeah, we can. Uh, we can do it again. That sounds great. All right, I'll coordinate that. Contact SoCal departure one two four point three for FedEx ten twenty six heavy. Twenty four three. Here we go. So long. Ops eighty two. Did you uh, get a good look at the gear? Left left gear. Yeah, we've got plenty of gas. And city ops, I passed that along. They're still in the downwind south of the airport, but they'll be coming back for another low approach, 2-4 left, and I'll, uh, once I talk to them, I'll find out how low they can possibly go. Okay, Tower just called. They have three ground vehicles down there uh, waiting for you on this pass. Uh, also, they said before that it looked like the door was open, but they weren't sure if uh, the gear was down. They said if you could go lower on the uh, on the low approach, should that be more beneficial for them to see so as low as you're comfortable? Um, yeah, with the doors open, it might be blocking the... Uh the view of the left gear there, but uh, yeah, primarily focused on the left gear. We got good indications on the nose on the right. Okay. Our Philly Tower, Roger, I'm going to go ahead and pull the phone now uh, in a second. He's coming back for one more low approach, and then we'll find out intention. That is 1026 Heavy Tower. Hey there, for just a second on uh, low approach, 2 left. That is 1026 Heavy, thanks. Wind calm, runway 24 left, cleared low approach. Caution weight turbulence from the heavy Boeing 767 ahead for the parallel. Look at uh, clear low approach uh, and FedEx 10, 26, uh, How low do you think you'll be able to go? We've got m multiple vehicles along the runway that are going to be uh, looking, but the lower the better. We're going to go for uh, about two to 300. Okay, thank you. FedEx 1742 Heavy, you might have a, a good vantage point as well. Your company is about two miles for the uh, left runway. They're going to be on a very low approach with a bad uh, left gear indicator, so if you guys are down there and you can kind of take a look out as well, we're trying to get as many eyes on it as possible. Yeah, we'll do uh, 1742 and we're short at T4 left on Alpha Alpha. Thank you. Thank you. FedEx 1026 Heavy, did you copy that from the vehicles on the ground? We did, thank you. FedEx 1026 Heavy, Roger. By the runway heading, maintain 2000. Runway heading 2000, FedEx uh, 1026 Heavy. FedEx 1026 Heavy, just for my planning um, intentions wise, are, do you want to? Are you going to go try to work it out over the ocean? Well, uh, we've been running the checklist and we're conferring with maintenance. Uh, I don't know if there's much more we can do, so um, we're probably going to start to have to plan for a, an approach to the four left. FedEx 1026 Heavy, Roger. Uh, the airplane did a hold, came back around, and did a low pass about 300 feet off the ground. And the tower people try to look at it with binoculars because it's quite a bit of a distance too and see if the gear was down and locked or not. The second time around, what they did, they actually came around, flew over the runway, and then there was a car or truck under the airplane and looking up and making sure that the gear was down and locked. In this case, they basically realized that the gear was not down and locked. But that's not the only parties that you get involved. You also, while you're holding, while you're doing your check checklist, after you're done with your checklist, you call your company. Because in your company headquarters, you have mechanics, what it's called in the MCC, main, uh, Maintenance Control Center. They actually have access to a lot more literature. They have a lot more uh, manuals under their, uh, under their access that they have access to. And they actually uh, consult, even with Boeing, get on the phone with an emergency and say, hey, look, this is the problem that we are facing. Well, uh, we've been running the checklist and we're conferring with maintenance. Uh, I don't know if there's much more we can do. So uh... so in this case, in, they, they did a very fantastic job. 
I mean, I even saw the picture where they landed the nose wheel right on the center line. It's just amazing to me. And they did a fantastic job. Unfortunately, what I was told that the first officer was injured. Once again, I made a mistake during this video. Please find that mistake and comment below and let me know where I made the mistake. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to turn the notifications on. So next time I put a video, it will be an interesting one. You don't want to miss it out. Thank you so much. And for now, Kaptan Baha out. Fast forward many years, I got my very first airline job and it was a Cessna. Uh, and some of the problems, what that, but, 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 of how the uh, landing gear works. Uh, that uh, it's all, sorry, I'm it's a controllable. Uh, when we first start our tr flight, why am I not able to talk today?